Hey, greetings, YouTube. You've tuned into Vacuum of the Month. So if you're looking for a technical repair video, please check out my back catalog. So I have some announcements to make that are very exciting. I'm going to share that with you. This video includes a promotion by yours truly. And that promotion is Pneumatic Henry. Um, I have recently become a Pneumatic Henry dealer. It's a long story, but a friend of mine recently started a business installing central vacuum so you'll get to see some footage from that hopefully soon um, but I am now a retailer of Henry vacuums and a couple other brands but Henry's the most exciting and strange one that I'm retailing so I wanted to just explain that to you and I don't have a website set up right now but to my viewers I do want to say um, I do have them available in the box ready to go um, and I have a few models that I have in stock, but I just thought I'd show those here. So for everybody who asked, where can I buy a cordless Henry? Well, the answer is I'm actually going to be selling them. So I don't like to sell stuff in my videos. That's not what my videos are about. But because, again, I'm helping a friend with a business, I'm just going to plug this real quick. And you probably won't see any more promotions from me anytime soon. So now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the Turbo Tool. So, as you can see here, we have the Turbo Tool. I've got some other stuff here I'll explain. But for the past month, I've been using this Turbo Tool and this bare floor tool in my house, which I absolutely love. And I have picked up a whole bunch of stuff. Well, let's see what we picked up for vacuum of the month. Again, I used my central vac, and if I sound muffled, it's because I'm wearing a mask and I got gloves on. Of course, I wore a white shirt today to do this, which is stupid. So I'm going to put all the dirt into a shopping bag. And I've got my ventilation and the garage door open and a few other measures because this is going to be really messy. But I want to explain what's in here. Now, I suck up these all the time. The reason I suck these up is I use them to kind of wipe clean the track for the hide hose before I retract the hide hose. But often my cat really likes, for whatever reason, to uh, just on the floor, she just likes to eat them. And she'll even pull them out of the trash. It's really weird. Um, so we're just going to grab all this fluff that I can. Oh man, that's gross. And now we can see the piece of white paper that I left. And we have a full bag. <laughs> that bag is super full. We'll grab the piece of paper. It's so gross. And yep, there's a piece of paper. So that's how the piece of paper stayed in there. That's what's in there. And I'm sure I'm going to have to dust off everything now. So this is really dusty. In fact, I'm going to manually run the unit just to suck everything back down. Let's go upstairs and examine that. So I had a comment uh, when I was doing this turbo tool originally um, that it was going to clog easily. And I concluded that yeah, it probably would. And that hasn't been my experience. In fact, I want to show something to you folks. Those dryer sheets just passed right in there. Not a problem at all. And I vacuum up dryer sheets on a regular basis to clean out my Hydro Hose Raceway. I reuse the old dryer sheets. Um, and the filter is fine enough in my central vac that that's okay. Usually I don't recommend those. And you can see they didn't even get stuck in the turbine. The turbine's actually fairly clean. So that's really cool. Um, but I really want to 
test it on camera. So we're going to do a big mess test. Well, everybody loves a big mess test. Well, at least I do. And we're just going to do it real quick with this tool because this is a big mess. They call this the gulper. Some companies market this. short uh, work at that and the thing I was surprised with this tool is how well this tool actually did on carpet so let me just push it back and forth I want you to see the marks it leaves so it did well on carpet now you might be asking yourself why didn't I use the turbo tool well, quite honestly, that would break the turbo tool. That's too much hair for a turbo tool. Now, when I did the review on this turbo tool, I put it on a couple of vacuums, but I, I didn't have this adapter in yet. I really wanted to get that review out. But this is an adapter that I got off eBay. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite cover this hole, but for my soft carpet, that actually works to my advantage. I don't have to turn the machine down. This really cool spun up uh, on this old Yula. So it's quite nice. Back, I back in my house once with this and my red velvet. And again, it's doing really nice marks. Really lifts the pile quite nicely. So I was super satisfied that that works on an old Mila. And this is a Mila with an Amtec motor, so the least powerful ones that we basically got in the U.S. Rather than for Vacuum of the Month having you guys vote on it, I want to show you a good variety of machines. So this month, we're going to pull out a very special machine because it's not mine. It belongs to a good friend of mine, uh, and I'll plug his channel right here. It's Compact9. He's letting me... HF6 Lint House. Now, if you haven't seen an HF6 Lint House, they're really cool machines. I mean, they are some of my favorite little canisters on the market. So it looks kind of like an R2-D2, and it comes with this nozzle. If you're not familiar with the Lint House nozzle, I've got other videos on it. And I do have a review on the HF6 at the show. And some of you may have noticed that watch my videos all the way through. They don't just stop at four minutes. Yes, that's the average watch time. It's like 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, so I would always appreciate if you watch my videos most of the way through. Uh, but I understand people have things to do, and a lot of people are just looking at my videos for information. So on to this machine, because this is really cool. At the show, I didn't get a chance to test its working vacuum. Long story, but the working vacuum gauge got left at home. So I've got it here. So we're going to test this working vacuum, and my friend was nice enough, and <laughs> this looks older than it is, but this is actually a brand new box of Lindhouse vacuum bags, and this is how they come. I don't know why they come in this old box. Um, you know, these weren't there at the show. I, I was so excited with just filming the videos I filmed at the show. This is something I would have loved to have mentioned to the company. Um, uh, they, the people in the house booth are so nice, by the way. Um, and I'm trying to remember his name. I've been trying to remember his name since the show. I actually lost a couple business cards at the show, and I'm kicking myself for it. So we're going to put this bag on. And if you notice, it kind of looks like a Hoover or a Eureka H uh, bag on here. And the other thing that's special about this, 
is the color. The color of this is kind of a rarity all in itself. And I'm just going to zoom in. We're not going to do the top down camera for this, but you get the idea. It goes on basically like the Henry. And this one's got a little bit of an odor to it because it had been sitting with a full bag in the basement. Um, I haven't had any odors coming from my Henry, by the way, which has a full bag almost. But this machine had a full, full bag and had been sitting down there for like a year. So it's one thing if you leave a full bag in the machine for three, four, or six months. Past a year, it gets kind of funky, and that's any machine. So that's just something to note about this. And your electrical contact is here and here. So it actually has kind of two places to plug in. It just goes on like that. And this one is really special because you've got a speed control right here. And this is a feature they've eliminated since. Here. Maybe. I muscled this on here. Let's see what it's working back in the Another thing that I needed to announce is I wanted to start offering to my Patreon supporters, and you can uh, there will be a link down below and at the end of the video. The working vacuum gauge as a set, both this section and this together, bundled together. Um, I'm not going to send these out to a couple YouTubers. I'm making a batch, but I am going to order some commercially. You have to order quite a few at a time, something like five to ten of these things at a time. So if you're interested in a working vacuum gauge, please comment below or hit me up on Patreon. This is going to be something I'm going to offer. And this can go even lower. And I did have this sealed. So there's the working vacuum of our lint house. That motor sure was spun down kind of bad. I wonder if the motor's going bad in this. Um, this one's quite old. It was a thrift store find, actually. Um, but this is going to be the vacuum of the month. And, you know, when I recommend products, I like to try them out of my house. And I really like Lynn House stuff, but I will really have never vacuumed in my house with a canister quite like this for any period of time. So it's going to be interesting to see that. And this is not the Direct Connect version on top of that. So that's a little awkward as well as I mess with this to get this plugged in here. And this handle, man does that remind us of a vintage Mila. But you can see that the cord, both the cord and the hose are extremely long. It's got like a 10 or a 12 foot hose. I mean it is a ridiculously long hose. Just to give you an idea there how long that hose is. Um, so that's going to be the vacuum of the month. So I want to thank everybody who is a part of our Patreon where we post exclusive videos who have already seen my review on this because they were Patreon supporters. Um, and they've seen a lot of my other content. They make things like this 4K camera possible. Thank you, Brian. And I've also, this month, I've started using a better microphone. So hopefully production values are going up. I've also upgraded the RAM in my computer, so, you know, video editing for 4K is rather intensive. So I've, I've done these things to try and help the channel out, and I want to grow. And We're almost at 3K subscribers, so I'm hoping, you know, by the end of the month here, you know, we get that extra 200. So please, if you like one of my videos, you like performance reviews, just, if some of you would just... Share it on your Facebook, share it on your Instagram. Uh, you know, if 10, 20 of you do that, we probably will get, you know, to that magic number. I like even numbers, if you haven't noticed. Um, well, we're going to do a big mess test. 
with this. But I didn't really get to do this at the show, but it is quite the machine. <laughs> That motor's gonna need some love, just like the Kirby and so many of the other vacuum of the month vacuums. We're going to have to take this thing apart and service it, which means you'll get to see a service video on it. Uh, but it is working quite well right now, despite that noise. I guess it wouldn't be a vacuum of the month if I didn't read some comments here on YouTube, because I love reading those. Um, this first one is from Craig. He's a regular commenter. Uh, I hate to say it, but Dyson failed, especially failed, <laughs> double failed there. Um, technology has not advanced enough for cordless vacuum cleaners to replace corded vacuum cleaners. I agree with you. The problem is the switch should be one push. Some people who use these machines are elderly and can't always hold the switch. And I will say it again, Dyson should have done more work, more research. Sadly, I feel Dyson is had their head, head in the clouds. Uh, where, where did I go? Oh, sorry, my phone's shut off there. Um, there is still room for improvements, and that was on my hard pill to swallow, the Dyson B11 review video. Definitely share that with friends because there's no reason you should buy the B11. Buy the B8 if you have to have a stick vacuum. Um, the uh, next question I got was from Will Smith. And he asked if Sibo and Mila use the same cords. And I believe they both use the same OEM supplier. Uh, I can buy just that cord without either of those companies' name on it. So that's just something interesting to know. And it comes from Germany. Um, one is on an old video during the advertising crisis on YouTube. The ad apocalypse, as some YouTubers have called it. And it's a simple, your channel is awesome. Um, and I'm not going to read the next one because it's not really sensical. I want to say, uh, we all draw a comment on YouTube sometimes, but yeah, those luckily get caught in the comment filter, especially held for review comments. So let's just read a few of those. One of those was from a Matthew and it was addressing my V10 service video. And he was telling me that I need to be a little bit more politically correct and not use the word retard. Well, if something's retarded, I'm going to call it retarded. And the short bus is a short yellow bus with retards on it. Sorry, my friend. We're going to continue using that word. I, as we know, I'm not a big fan of censorship. Um, call me low class, but that that's what you uh, should know. So those are really all I've had. Oh, one other thing. There is a certain uh, gentleman. I'm not going to call him by his last name because I think he uses his real last name uh, but he doesn't have a picture, and his name is Phil. And he made several really long comments. Um, in fact, I thought YouTube limited the characters you could put. That's how long these comments were. They were definitely over 500 characters. They went straight to the spam filter. Um, and I tried to retrieve them the other day and wasn't able to. Using the spam filter... Uh, on here sometimes doesn't work. There's a lot of lag that happens with the YouTube uh, Studio app. So that's something to know. So those are kind of really been my comments lately. Not much. Um, 
As always, I can easily be reached by email, which if you want one of these Henrys, definitely hit me up by email. Um, anyways, like, subscribe, comment below, and stay awesome.